Hey, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steve. And you are you. And that means this is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing, podcast. Yeah, I know. I just did the stuff they don't want you to know intro. I don't know anything about that. You never watched no that I, show? I have no idea what you're doing right now. Show. I was doing the intro. Okay. But then I was saying how you I- You said did. you are you? You, the listener, are you. Okay. That's from stuff they don't want you to know. I don't listen to that one. Well, you should. It's a great conspiracy podcast. They don't want me to know that stuff. Yeah. Speaking of conspiracies, have you seen this new show from Marie Kondo? I haven't seen the show. You you haven't seen the show. My But my wife has been in full Marie Kondo mo- mode. Is it Marie Kondo? Her name is Marie Kondo. Or her Marie Kondo. Okay. Is, she's Japanese. You said it like Kondo. And like, is this, is she like. Well, it's Kondo if you're pronouncing it the white way. <laughs> That's the way you said it. I know, because I'm half white. I know. That's why I said it That's that way. That's the half of yourself that you used to say it, yeah. I suppose. Uh, yeah, so my wife got deep into it. I think she did like the audio book or something like that, or she, she had like, oh, if, the she ebook. Did, she wasn't watching the show? No, she did the ebook. I think. Oh. Um, it was funny because the show came on Netflix, and I pointed it to her, and I was like, you're gonna probably going to like that show, and it's probably going to be your I thought that was why, you, why she was so into it. No, I think she just... Because people were talking about the show, she stumbled onto the book or something. Okay. So she completely cleared out like a ton of crap, yeah. crap out of that So that's house. why there were all those. So I have a lot more room for amps and pedals now. <laughs> that's why there were all those memes that were like, like guys going through their guitars. Yup. <laughs> like, like I got, tw- I got 20 guitars and every single one sparks joy. I haven't actually like, like expose myself to any of like the culture of it or what you're supposed to actually do like my wife has told me about it and i'm like yeah okay yeah get rid get rid of stuff i'm fine and she's like oh here go through your clothes and she put it out a certain way and and i didn't like hold it and like ask it for forgiveness or anything is that what you're supposed no, no. to do <laughs> you're supposed to thank it <laughs> i didn't ask any of my clothes for forgiveness you get your even clothes. though i owe all my clothes forgiveness. <laughs> you get your clothes and then you say to your clothes, thank you. Next. Right. So I got rid of thank a lot of you. stuff. I mean, Next. I, I don't know. No. So it's like, so the whole thing is it's like combining some sense of like Taoist spirituality sure. with, I've thought about making like little like quick baby videos where I con Marie, like Marie con Marie Kondo. Con, it's called con Marie. Her, con Marie. her name is Marie con. Kondo. But the program is called Con Marie. Con Marie. Okay, it's where I Con Marie like everything in the room and actually do get rid of stuff. Not be one of those guys just like, oh, yep. I like well, it. so I mean, yep, like, I like legitimately, it. legitimately, like you could go through all the pedals and, you know, I don't know. Here's an example. Here we go. Here's an example. What's up? Are there any pe- are there any pedals up here that you think you're going to sell like in the near future? I've actually got a box of pedals up in the office that I'm going to sell. But we're not in your office. I know. I know. I kn- no, all these are going to survive the cut, Steve, for sure. I'm going to keep them all forever. All right. So let's say you decided to sell the TC Electronic Third Dimension. You would say, "Thank you, TC Electronic Third Dimension. I'm going to sell you, but thank you for." allowing me to make a video with you that has garnered me several thousand YouTube views. That's it. Sounds you've like been a nice a, thing to do. You've been a profitable venture in my life. But I'm and not... I'm now not, I will send you on to somebody else who will love and cherish you. I'm not going to sell it, though, because it's a great sounding chorus. It's also a little sticky. Like, I feel weird selling stuff that I was, you know, hired to demo. I'm, ju- I'm just saying, like, that is... That's an example Like, publicly of, selling. I'm going to sell it. That's an example of how you sure. would... Con Marie something. Right. She would actually probably be pretty impressed with like the organization in this room. You know what? My wife did. She uh, would not. She would be really confused by the net back there behind the camera. That is a uh, that is a hammock, Steve. That is for my relaxing. When's the last time you used that hammock, that's Ryan? That's for my relaxing time. When's the last the time? Nice when is the last time you used that hammock? Not since the summer, Steve. Last summer. You used it last summer. Mm-hmm. It okay. sparked joy. All right. All right. All right. If it. I've already apologized so- to it. So that's another thing is, is, um, this I like, I'm going to start my own program where you, you, you have to apologize to your, <laughs> to your possessions. So, so that's the other thing is like with clothes, like you give them away. If, if, you know, you decide you don't want anymore, you thank it and you, you pack it up and you give it away, but your clothes or your items and your spouse's items right. are a hundred percent. I wasn't expecting Steve to so know so much about if this. If you decide that you like, say you have like an old shirt 
that you don't ever wear anymore, but every time you see it, you're like, I like this. Like this makes me happy to see it. Mm-hmm. This makes me happy the one time a year that I wear it, whatever. It doesn't matter if Lauren hates it. That's because my shirt. because it sparks joy in you. I actually have, I have and a, she cannot take that joy away from you. I have a big tote of shirts. So up if in the she attic. ever tells you to sell any of these guitars, you say, Lauren, these guitars spark joy. My wife has never asked me to no, sell any guitar gear. I know. You're lu- you're a lucky man. Yeah. He's a lucky Luck wo- has nothing to do with it. Wo- yeah. Mostly shame. You shamed her into marrying you? <laughs> I, I'm the, you took advantage my jo- of, my you joke took was advantage that she of should... some level of shame that she had about her own personal life? No, my joke was that she should be ashamed to be married to me. I mean, that's like the self-deprecating. It sounded more like the joke was that you're, when you married your wife, she had really like irreparably low self-esteem and no. you tricked her into marrying you. No. That, that's what... That's what I you heard. You know what? I'm. Gonna, I'm. Just, we're both lucky to have each other. We both. We both uh, made out like bandits, in different ways. I'll say that. We're a good. We're a good couple, Steve. Bro, you're trying to get me to come to read my my marriage. Hey, if, uh, my favorite. <laughs> my favorite one. Uh, Steve is trying to get me to divorce my wait, wife. Uh, no, I'm not saying you should divorce your wife. I'm just saying, like, if your wife. She could probably hear this right if now. If your wife doesn't spark joy, then uh, you should get rid of her. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> if, if your relationship with your wife doesn't spark joy maybe you should work on your relationship maybe we should be working on our relationships with our possessions like if you've got a guitar or a pedal that's not sparking joy in your life maybe the first instinct isn't to sell it maybe you should work on your relationship with that guitar maybe oh, throw yeah. uh maybe throw a fresh pickup in there fresh set of strings i was gonna say you know, get a yourself fresh in- set of strings you know if you want a fresh set of strings you know where to get them yeah, the string store. Sponsor of the show, Dario. Boom, we're doing our sponsorship super early. Well, we're doing this sponsorship super early. Yep. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Dario XL Strings. Right here, I'm holding a pack, a 10 set. There's not 10 sets in here because Ryan's been using them. I actually need to pull a set out and throw it on my Squire Telecaster I know, man, you there. broke that thing a while ago. I know. Um, XLs are also what I use. That actually, I have, a, I have my own box of EXL 110s at home. Um, but... But Dario has a whole lineup of strings. They have the ultra bright pro steels. If you want something like really bright and like high attack, you get the pro steel. On the other hand, they have the uh, the chromes. They're a flat wound string. They're going to be nice and mellow and jazzy. And right in the middle, the classic nickel wound. The classic nickel wound string. I don't know what to say it's about that. It's the classic. It's it's the string. It's like <laughs> I'm fumbling. Dario is the industry standard for strings. They're made in the United States in New York. Excuse me. Get a rope. As in get, get, as in get these strings. <laughs> Head on over to Dario.com. They've got a little thing on, their, st- on the XL string site where you can slide it around. If you want something brighter, something warmer, they'll recommend a string to you. I can have to check that out. I haven't seen that yeah, yet. No, it's cool. Um, Dario.com. This of course, there's a link in the show notes. This sponsorship came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting it to happen. A wild sponsorship. You know, appeared. Ryan, it was a great sponsor spot until you ruined it by pointing out that fact. I did this organically. I did this on my own. I sparked so much joy. This first ad. Ooh, my joy just sparked. This first ad was sent by Tim Cornfield. Uh, it's just called Various Clones, and I picked it because I liked it. It sparked joy. Steve was like, I want to do this ad. And I was like, well, can you explain why? And he's like, I just want to do it. And I was like, yeah. Okay, Steve. I, I, this, so one, this one's... Whoops. <laughs> this one's for Steve. I just sprayed beer everywhere. Great, dude. We're getting all fumbly my, here. I got beer all over me now. My wife is going to think I'm smashed when I get home. Anyway. <laughs> um, Make it a paper towel. This ad was sent by Tim Cornfield. It says, looking to offload some pedal effect clones. Um, so I'm sorry, some effect pedal clones. All are built with quality components and die cast enclosures, hand wired on Vero board. Uh, so it's got the fire driver, which is a pro Karat, a lint roller, which is an analog man sun face. I'm not going to go through the whole list. The reason I picked this is for the fire driver. It is a $50 pro Karat clone. I feel like if I saw this locally, I would chase it. 
And it's only because, and you guys, got, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you got to check this out. Go look at the pictures. You um, should be looking at the look pictures, at pictures. Every, every time anyway. There's one called the Roma Fuzz, which I guess kind of looks like Italian restaurant font. There's one called Kickin', and it's got a picture of a donkey, so it's supposed to be kicking ass. Um, well, I think the Roma Fuzz is just, it's trying to play on the letters that are in Roger Mayer Octava Fuzz. But it's a, it's a... Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, it's like they rearranged oh. like the o, the O from Octava to be in between Roger and the M A of Mayor. You realize the first two letters of Roger are R and O. Oh yeah, you cracked the code, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> that makes total sense. Well, they <laughs> capitalized that Octava, Octavia. <laughs> And I was like, oh, this is significant. This means something. I'll move it around behind the R. The, the R. You and Tom Hanks. Oh, wait, are you hanging out with Tom Hanks? I, I, well, here's what I did. Since this is the Roma Fuzz, are you with Tom Hanks at the Vatican? Or are you in Washington, D.C. Oh, with this Ni is a Nicolas Cage? Is the Roma Fuzz a national treasure? Jeez, man. I'm sorry, Steve. Oh. All right, and so anyway... <laughs> It's a bunch of different clones. I actually, the one that I'm most interested in is a fire driver. I know, because you like the art Because it's got a it. picture of Mega Man. You want to explain your theory behind the and art? My theory is that um, there are a bunch of images, old images, graphics, for, so you might say, of Mega Man, where uh, he's got his arm cannon like facing towards like the perspective of the viewer. Right, like he's going to shoot you with that cannon. Yeah, and my thought is that this person saw the stomp switch and said, that kind of looks like the business end of an arm cannon. I like this idea, but I feel like it doesn't make sense unless they had put the body of the character behind the foot switch. Dude, people know what Mega Man looks like. They don't you need to see to, that body. You had to really, you don't need to see that body, says Steve. You don't need to see that body to know what's there. <laughs> um, you had to explain it to me for me to get what you were talking. You had to like find look, a picture man, for me. Look, man, it's I not think it's my. A, I think it's a bit of a stretch. It's not my fault that you do not have the eye for design that I possess. I, I heard. Do, I, I do. heard that you should never trust a guy whose eyes go in two different directions for advice on graphic design and general <sighs> guitar design. I read that somewhere. I read that on, on YouTube, I think. Yeah, if you read it on YouTube, it must be true. It must be true. <laughs> I do I, I do I, agree with you that a bunch of these pedals, I mean, if they work as as described. Yeah. These are these are these are uh, grabbable. I'd yeah. These are snatchable, I'd even say. You can snatch these right up like a fifty dollar uh a uh, a rat clone that looks kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's I, I you know would, it's disposable income level stuff. Uh, I would say like for all of these, if I didn't think the graphic like the fuzzy bear like it's a weird, it's like a. I think that's the one I would grab. Really, even though it's a it's a forty dollar clone of a fifty dollar pedal. Right. Well, it's a forty dollar clone of a fifty dollar pedal with a graphic that looks like it's like the. I know what fuzzy bear is. Right. And I tell you what fuzzy bear is. And then you tell your wife what Fozzie Bear is, and then she tells my nine-year-old what Fozzie Bear is, and my nine-year-old draws the picture. Right, right. That is this graphic. But I like it for that charming nature there. The only one I don't like is the kick-in uh, graphic, just because it's so, like, like, you'd expect to see that same horse on, like, a Joyo pedal. Right, and you know? also, like, I didn't realize it was supposed to be kicking ass. Right. I just was, like, kicking horsey? Kicking yeah. horse? Yeah, I, 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 got, I didn't get it. I saw a horse. I didn't see a donkey. I just, or maybe just kick in and there's not another word. It's just, it's a pedal that gives you some kick. Yeah. I guess. Um, but I, do, I, I would, sure. I would say I, I also, I'd grab that. I'd grab, grab that fuzzy bear. I, I would also say like, I'm not super on board with, if these were all just plain enclosure, I'd be like, this is dumb. Like, sure. You know, if you can get it, but you're not really saying why yeah, these are like, any better than what you would buy off the shelf. I like the homemade graphic kind of thing here. No, the, I think the graphic, I think the graphic is what makes this worth. It's charming because, uh, you know, for example, like the, the kicking, the kicking ass, it's supposed to be a Timmy clone. Yeah. It's $80. 
I think I paid like $100 for my real Timmy. So if you don't love this graphic, just pay $20 and get the real thing. Get the real thing. Or pay, you know, the full price, which is like $125, and buy it directly from Paul. Yeah. Whatever. That's all I got for this. We did it. We, we did it. Let's move on to the topic. One then. done. This first topic was sent by uh, Brenton Selassie. Is that um, how you say his last name? I don't know. That is how you say his last name. That's how I say How would you say his last name? Thalassi? That can't be correct. That emphasis was really weird. Thalassi? Brenton Thalassi? <sighs> There's no way that's right. <laughs> Do you think he actually listens to this show? I hope so. Because I know Casey doesn't, and they're really fr close friends. Just because someone's friends with someone else who doesn't listen to the show doesn't mean that they don't also listen to the we show. We were talking about Casey at work the other day. Why were you doing that? Because I was telling my friends about how everyone thinks Casey is gay. Well, he is. I'm pretty sure he's not. Casey, you're listening to the show. Confirm or deny in the, uh, in the Facebook group. Anyway, Brenton says, sign me up, lol. This is an ad for careers and music. He told me he did gay stuff in the Navy. So He was in the Marine Corps. Oh, that's, and then he's got a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> well, we just lost half of our listenership. Uh, the Navy side? <laughs> Casey is a is an old, old friend of ours. An, I feel like an we should. An IRL friend. Yeah, an actual friend. Uh, I feel like we should. Needed to clarify that for some reason. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, this ad says careersinmusic.com. Ever wondered how to become a professional guitarist? Ex Third Eye Blind lead guitarist Tony Brady and Ellie shares how to turn your passion for performance into a lifelong career. And then the the thing says earn up to thirty million dollars for forty tour date tours playing guitar. Become a guitarist. Well, first to really get our heads wrapped around. Like how much money this guy is making, um, or that we could potentially make. Okay. Is a 40 day tour a year long tour, or does that get broken up into like a two and a half year long tour? I feel like, or maybe you could do 40 dates in half a year. If you double up on the weeks, you know, two, two I shows mean, a I'm, week. I'm trying to figure out if this is a real question. Well, like, are you working for half a year to get 30 mil or are you working for two and a half years to get 30 mil? Like, it's a significant difference in earnings. Well, okay, Steve. so that's the thing that that's actually really confusing is like, so what he's saying is basically make three quarters of a million dollars per show. Did you just do the math on your I calculator? Just did, I just did the math. I can see it from here. $750,000 yeah. per show. But here's the thing is like, holy hell, how many years do you have to? OK, so assu assuming that that's a real number, which I don't even believe that's a real number. I do not believe I think that that's, that's a, a real, real number. number for original members of like the Rolling Stones. Yeah. I'll, OK, yeah, I'll give you that. But like Third Eye Blind. Yeah. Third Eye Blind. Like, I, I'm sure they're making money because because they had they had a few number. They had a few top tens. They, sure. they were a big band in the mid '90s. They were a big band in the mid '90s. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to take that away from them. But, I wouldn't dare take that away from them. But I would say like they're a. Hundred... I wish you would step back from taking that away from them, my friend. Is that third eye blind? <laughs> it is. It okay. is. I got it, it right. I'm so glad. <laughs> Good job. Um, <laughs> I would say that they're maybe like a hundred thousand dollar guarantee band per gig. Like if I wanted to hire them to yeah. play at my company's Christmas party or your niece's take, or your niece's birthday. Yeah, it'd take about a hundred thousand dollars. We're working with super rich Steve here. I mean Super Rich Steve could definitely afford Third Eye Blind for a private show, but maybe not the Rolling Stones. <laughs> super Rich Steve would hire Third Eye Blind and then like go behind the uh, the set and cut all the cables from their amps. And, and then light them play. on fire. <laughs> and then light them on fire. <laughs> um um so so I mean and then tip that's the band. a lot of money, even like for wait, yeah. wait, which what which seven seven hundred fifty thousand dollars? Like I'm saying, well, that, compared to thirty million, it's not a lot, Steve. Well, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars per show. The other thing is, it's saying like the implication here, I think, for someone who doesn't really like think this through, is like thirty million dollars per forty day tour. Like, oh, 40? Like, there's fifty two weeks a year, so I'd only be working like whatever, right? They oh no, that's full time on the road. Well, 40 dates isn't full time on the road if you're only playing weekends. But like that's basically in order to be only playing weekends, you have to be 
That's true. The guy. Because if you have to be the person. Yeah. Because like, I'm pretty sure when Taylor Swift comes to San Diego, she plays on a Wednesday and that's Taylor freaking Swift. Yeah. I'm not sure what day of the week. Justin Timberlake was just in town. One, Justin Timberlake played the the sports arena. You think they tried to like plan their tours so they're like, got to hit LA on a weekend. We'll hit San Diego. On like a Thursday. On the way through to the next big city. Yeah. And I mean, some of that, like, which is Tijuana, they then they hit Tijuana on a Friday or a Saturday because that's a hot market. So I mean, so yeah, sure. <laughs> I get the joke. You're not making thirty million dollars per forty date tour playing as Justin Timberlake's backing band, and he's probably the kind of guy who could get away with only doing forty dates a year, right? Like, I think three eleven at their peak hustle was. Like, I've never heard of this guy before. The na- the Tony Tony yeah he I, he was well he was with Third Eye Blind from 2000 to 2010, so that was even like that's not even peak Third Eye Blind yeah they may have had like one hit during that time but definitely not like one of their big biggest hits see we didn't even read this article we're just we're just like everyone else on the internet we're just trashing on this ad well I went to careers in music so I will say of it I went to careers in music.com it seems like they have a lot of resources for like how to become a professional musician not just a guitarist well, but if you can make 30 million dollars who wouldn't want to be a professional not musician. just not just a guitarist but like a DJ a singer whatever so sure. so but this does say playing guitar I could actually see like if you were a Calvin Harris level DJ, uh, Daft Punk level DJ. Maybe you're making thirty million dollars in a forty yeah, but day the, tour. That's the guy. Yeah, it's like uh, the guy or Daft Punk is two guys, you know, right, plus, right. plus your team or whatever, right? Um, but what first again, like just to back up, like I think it, I I don't know what year it was, but I know in the nineties, like. 311 was well and and this was like pe- like maybe not peak 311 right but like hustling 311 so like beautiful disaster era 311 right. whereas, before amber whereas i would say like amber is peak 311 or even like come original is peak 311 like that later era okay but beautiful disaster 311 when they were like a huge alternative rock band but not uh not a household name, like when my dad knew 311. Your dad knows 311? <laughs> no. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, want, I, I don't really want to listen to 311 anymore, but I do want to listen to 311 while your dad is the one who's oh listening my to gosh. 311. Every, dude, every once in a while, I am like, I need a, I, like, every once in a while, I got this itch where I'm like, I really need to hear, like, some early 311. Oh, yeah. I mean, who doesn't like early th- 311? I mean, like, it was this. I it, just don't. It really was like, a sound of all our summers, like 1996 yeah. to 1998. I just really want to come original all the time, and that's why I'm making this podcast. Yeah. If you think, if you agree with me that I'm coming original, uh, you should head on over to patreoncom humcast and send some money my way. Also, Ryan's way. I'll make uh, sure Steve gets. A it's little a great bit way it. to support the show. We do lots of things, like go and make coverage of Sweetwater Gear Fest, and we Summer did that Nam, last year. Hopefully. I'm going to do Summer Winter Nam this year. And all kinds of things like that. Um, it's also just a way to tell us that you appreciate the content. For or the, you could... For or the you low, could... low price of one cup of coffee a month. Oh, my God. In the arms of <laughs> an angel. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, just uh, go support us. Uh, when we get to 100 pat- patrons on Patreon, I will stop doing random pitches. Whoa. For a it's little a bit, big promise. Until I decide to to pick a bigger number. I feel like if we hit a hundred Patreons, I'm gonna get really excited about Patreon and be like, <laughs> I need to push this full time. Why? I don't know why you're not. But anyway, um, that so <laughs> back to the show. I'm just trying to make a career in music.com. Back to the show. Uh, well, I think there's a thing for podcasters on here too. There probably on is. this website. How how to make literally dozens of dollars? What podcasting I, what, about the, guitar? The point that I keep teasing and still haven't gone to is I think in that era, three eleven was playing like three hundred shows a year. Sure, like a lot of these bands that eventually get big and eventually make maybe the entire band is making thirty million dollars a year off of record sales and shows. And everything else. And maybe they only play 40 dates because it's a year that they're recording an album. So they don't play a full, a full schedule. They spent time building 
a following by playing three or four nights a week right, right. and doing 200 to 300 shows a year for year after year after year. They take a, they take a year where they do like, maybe they do 40 shows and then they record an album and then to promote so the album you, the next year, they're doing 200 shows. So do you think this ad article clickbaity thing from careers and music is a, a, an extremely targeted ad at this very small percentage of professional musicians who are like, man, it is rough making $30 million playing 300 shows a year. Man, I wish I could cut that in half. Wait, what? Only 40 dates per I, year? Here's what, here's That's what, how we'll make, here's almost what I still want. make $30 million? <laughs> here's what I want to know. If you are, are you going to go my way? If you're a guitar player who makes $30 million a year, regardless of the number Why of, are you still playing of guitar? dates that you play, uh, just shoot us an email at 60cyclehumcast.com <laughs> at gmail.com because we want to hear from you. Let's, uh, let's work something out to get you on the show after Ryan maybe buys a Rode Procaster. If... With if, that sweet, sweet money that we got from patreon.com slash GC Cycle Homecast. If I made $30 million in a year doing anything, the very next year after that, I would do nothing. <laughs> and I might continue doing nothing. <laughs> just go live in Hawaii for, for a, a very long time. This house is time. just vacant. My family. No, I'd, I'd, I'd stay at home. And there's you, no can, you can move to Hawaii and my family will move into your house. I just, I'd maybe I'd, I'd keep, I'd, I'd take some time off and I'd figure out like, what are the things I like doing? Oh, I kind of miss podcasting. Maybe I'll podcast again, but I'll just be Buck Wild, and who cares what I say or do in it anymore? How's that different from now? Good point. (laughs) We're not exactly censoring ourselves here. We're just not creative enough to say awful things. (laughs) I mean, we're a little censored. I did say ass this episode, and that's kind of out of What were you going to say instead? Uh, I was going to say, you know who else sponsored this show? Who? Faceless Audio. (laughs) Speaking of ass, that is... (laughs) horrendous it is <laughs> how are you gonna spin this into something positive i can't i can't speaking of ass the gravitas will make you shake your ass that's so the warped vinyl will warp your ass the tonal recall will make you remember your ass joel's gonna love this and the dark world will will uh i don't know uh, we'll link your ass to another dimension. There you go. There you go. Link your ass. Because it's a dark world. I the guess. Legend of Zelda reference. Dude, did you not watch their teaser? The dark I world? did. I did. Yeah, Legend of Zelda. All right. I, it's not, you know. It's, Guys, seriously. It doesn't hang on the tip of my brain because I wasn't a Zelda player when uh, I was a kid. Seriously, uh, Chase Bliss Audio. That's the sort of thing that loses company, subscribers. And um, if I say that I didn't, didn't play Zelda, we just I lost know. like. Five. Yeah, five people. Um, Chase Bus Audio sponsored the show. They make pedals with analog brain, analog heart, <laughs> digital brain, analog heart, except for the except for the dark world, which is digital you, brain, you digital know that, heart. You know that we get paid to do sponsorship, Steve. Like we should probably be a little bit more professional instead of saying ass all the time and then not being able to deliver. I was trying to get back to where I could explain how I said that because um, dude, just leave it alone. It's okay. Um, where, uh, I, I was going to say how I got that idea from a radio commercial from San Diego a few years ago. You got the idea for ass from a radio no, commercial? No, for saying like speaking of ass. Oh, okay. Because of the whole, because of Dallas's whole thing. Oh, right, right. Well, speaking of garbage. Name drop people here. Dallas doesn't listen to us. It doesn't matter. Other people might know who he is. No one who knows Dallas listens to this show. I mean, sometimes, I don't know. But anyways... Chase plus pedals. The thing I always say about them is that they're more creative than you are. I mean, with all the dip switches back here and all the options, the crazy things you can dial in with each and every Chase plus pedal, with this Chase plus control format that they have, Mm -hmm. the sky's the limit. There's probably millions of different combinations with these pedals. It's insane. And you know what? Like, I'm a I'm a simple musician. If you guys have watched any of the videos I play, and you know I'm a really simple musician. I can use them Maybe too. Maybe not even simple enough sometimes. <laughs> I mean, that's true. Um, because there are a ton of features, but but above all, they sound fantastic even if you're not using those extra features. Yeah. Beyond being like crazy wackadoodle noise-making pedals, which they certainly can be, at their core, there are these beautiful sounding analog effects that do fantastic things. Yeah. 
It's wonderful. Tastelessaudio.com. Go check them out. If you buy anything from them, tell them that we sent oh, you. Please, please name drop us. Please mention us. All right. This, uh, <laughs> this next. I'm begging you. <laughs> this next ad was sent by Jameson Lewis of the uh, Jameson Whiskey um, fortune. Why am I looking at my phone? The ad is on if my he iPad. Is, if he is of that fortune, Steve, he should definitely support us on Dude, Patreon. he's not. I just said that because I thought it would be funny. It's not funny. Um, what if he is, though, and he's this, been secret about it? This ad is called Base Bridge. It's a Ray Ross saddleless base bridge, now available. Uh, it, this is a saddleless base bridge. Is so. it actually saddleless? I mean, kind of. Those are technically saddles. All right. Uh, the Ray Ross Base Bridge is now available via AP International. So AP International is, I don't know uh, if they're a dist- I think they're a distributor, but they distribute like Floyd Rose. I think okay. They distribute like a bunch of different uh, guitar accessory brands. Sure. Uh, created by Aaron Ross and originally shown on his base number 27, the bridge uses saddleless design to streamline the string's path. Rather than, quote, rather than utilizing a traditional saddle to provide string break, the Ray Ross features a tone pin that keeps the string completely straight from the bridge to the nut. This concept removes the kink from the string, providing increased vibrational energy through the strings and into the body of the instrument, end quote, a press release explains. Quote, this feature allows maximum transference to the instrument so you can get the most of the bass itself, not solely the color of the bridge. Comprised of solid breath, Brass, the residual Brass. tone uh, you do get from the bridge is articulate, resonant, and full-bodied. End quote. The bridge allows for adjusting string height with a ladder action with a later action adjustment wheel um, that raises and lowers the tone pin, while a second lateral adjustment wheel lets you adjust for intonation. It can be installed on many bases with seven screw holes to choose from uh choose from including the spacing of fender's five hole design yeah uh this is available with a price point between 139 and 179 dollars depending on the finish let's describe in real talk here what is happening with this bridge for the listeners at okay home. so what you got here if you're watching the video this will make sense uh if you you'll are, see the picture if of you're it. listening we're describing it for oh, the Oh, yeah, listeners. you're going to show the picture here. Yeah, so yeah. describe it's for the listeners. Right here. Basically, you think of what a tuning peg looks like. Yeah. And it's on the other end. It's, it's a, on the bridge. It's on the bridge. So, But like the way it's designed is that you slide the string through it, and then the ball end... like. Rest against the red rests against the post. Rest against the post. And so the, the string is just sustained without touching anything as it hangs off the ball end. Yeah. Um, well, it's, it sounds and like, and then like your, your, the wrap at the base of the string, like extends into your playing area. Right. Instead of being behind the bridge. I'm trying to saddles. figure out if there's maybe like a peg or something inside of it that like really has like contact to contact because it really seems like there's not actually string. Like once you get this strung up, there's not really like string to peg contact. No, it is hanging off of the ball end. Like the string is suspended. That's what that's what I mean. So off the ball end. So if the string is small is smaller, which it would normally be in order to pass through the hole, like the guide. Right. Then it's just floating. Yeah. Like it's effectively just floating in the space. So you're relying completely on the transference between the ball end. And the uh, let's call it a saddle. The saddle, sure. This pen saddle concept, and not only that, you're relying on transference of resonance energy, whatever you want to call it, from the entire string through the one piece of core wire that goes around the ball end, Mm -hmm. and then through the ball end, and then through this multi piece bridge concept. Right, and you've got like before before the resonance of the string even like starts to come in contact with right. the body. Right, and this is a bass string, which means you have maybe like half an inch of extra like extra thick wrap. Yeah, I mean, could you imagine? Which isn't designed to be part of your string path. No, it's not. Like, imagine if you took a string 
if you made a, a string at I'm home imagining. and you wrapped it yourself and you just completely fudged up uh part of it so that like this the wrap was extra thick and bunched up on one side and now that is in the playing range of the string as it's on the guitar that's what you're doing here is that you know the back end of your string has a, like a giant extra wrap portion on it where the core is doubled over itself a couple times yeah and then the nickel wrap around it is bunched up over it like that's not an ideal like playing surface let alone who knows what it does to right the resonance of the string to have that be part of the string that is you know shaking around when you're yeah. playing it i'm i kind of understand like big picture like i kind of understand from like a pulled out view i guess what this person is what what this inventor is trying to do but without experiencing it i it seems like this is trying to solve a problem that doesn't exist well a lot of these guitar gadgets do that like anytime someone reinvents the wheel it's like no one else sees this as a problem, this thing that you're trying to well, solve. So, I mean, like, I, I I, watched a couple of the demo videos of of one of the bases or of some of the bases that are equipped with this system. And as I listened to it, I was like, this just sounds like active, like a modern active pickup. Right. You know, there's nothing here that's telling me why this is better than than a modern, like, hip shot bridge or a modern bridge you know put together with something really good from like strandberg or whatever i mean i get the concept of like experimenting with having the string be in less contact with bridge components versus a string sure. that is like wrapped around the edge of a saddle and having the most contact possible with a bridge like maybe there's some sort of debatable concept there as to different kinds of sounds that can be achieved and different kinds of responses mm -hmm. from the string and whatnot. But the moment that you move the part of the string that is not meant to be played into the playing range right. between the bridge and the nut, like there's a problem with your design. Like there's just a problem with this design. Like to do this, I, I know that he wants to completely avoid any kind of bend in the string. Yeah, And to get those wraps behind those saddle pieces, there would have to be some kind of bend. But you need that. Unless you redesign it. Like if he did, like the, remember those Fender bullet strings? Or yeah. The, or the Floyd Rose bullet strings that were made to like drop in, like perfectly spaced. Yeah. And they were had like a, a chunk of metal just welded onto the end of it. Like you could do that instead of having the wraps here, but people don't really want to commit to one brand of string that is specially made and doesn't have a lot of options. People like to mix and match. So, and come so up here's an, here's another thing about this. Like, and maybe I'm just like butchering the physics on this. It's possible. I'm not a physicist. Sure. Me either. My degrees in biology. I'm a little fizzy, but I'm, I'm not a physicist. Um, is basically what you have here because the part of this design, if, if you read about it on the website, when a physicist asks for help, do you think he calls it a phys assist? Hey, could I get a physicist over here? The top so, quality dad so joke. So anyway, right there. Um, if you go on the website, one of the things they talk about is how when you on a traditional guitar, you have your bridge, and then it runs up to a saddle, and it goes up to the saddle, and it hits the saddle, and then it angles back down. So you have this angling, right? right? Like that's understood. Um, and so the whole point of this is just that you have a straight line, right? There's no saddles; it's just a straight line. Or the idea being that if you interrupt that line, then somehow you're robbing something out of the string. Right. Is right. this guy's concept here. I, yeah, basically. Um, and, and my thought is, and I realize like the post is designed to be perfectly 90 degrees. So if you have a perfect 90 degree interaction, um, you're going to transfer. I don't know. I don't think the the angle matters. No, I'm saying in so, this so so what I'm saying is like the the whole point of this is like oh you like your bridge is made out of brass and yada 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 whatever because it's a tone I metal. I mean you've seen that you've seen and the it's going to transfer directly to to the wood but my thought is like if the string is is connected to the um the saddle at like an exactly 90 degree angle is that ac actually a better angle than 
say, um, instead of 90 degrees on top, you're now 90 degrees inside. And with the saddle, you're at, instead of 90 degrees, you're at maybe like 85 degrees or, right. or whatever. Enough, downward. enough of an, a break angle to hold the string down. Yeah, whatever that, I don't know what that break angle is. It's, it's, I'm sure it's greater than 60 degrees, but I don't know how high it it's might just, be. It's just, it's solving a theoretical problem that no one is having. <laughs> right. And then like the whole thing falls apart once you realize that, yeah, he solved the problem of, a, of not have the problem in air quotes of not of the break angle at the bridge. You think this guy's got a break angle angle at his nut? He for sure does. Is that well, ruining? Is that ruining his string dynamics? Sure, but or it's like you're at least you're eliminating one of them, so you have a in He's theory 50% you have like a fifty percent improvement, right? I don't. Know, this is just like the other thing is you know providing increased in vibrational energy, but I've already owned bases that literally like um, you go burn and then you walk, you take the base off and and you put it on the you ground. You know how you increase your vibrational energy with a base? This is with you a slap of the base. All right, dude, whatever. Um, this next ad's from Sinusoid. Steve hates that. Sinusoid Cables. Uh, what are we highlighting this time, Steve? What's your notes on that? You're, where are you going? You're going to highlight the Sasquatch. The Sasquatch? That's their power cable, right? Or their speaker cable? We'll do this when Steve gets back. Yeah, all right. Um, let's move on to our next set of sponsors. Uh, you're just supposed to jump into sinusoid. He left us to go to the bathroom. Just finish your sponsorship for sinusoid, Steve. Why can't you do the sponsorship? Is it because I you have the notes on it? Because I love sinusoid more than you. Don't you dare. Don't you dare do that. Steve. This week's episode. As I love, we love sinusoid different. It's sponsored by sinusoid pro audio couture. This week we're talking about their Sasquatch line of cables, uh, power cables, speaker cables, if you need a replacement IEC, you want something a little more robust, or maybe something at a custom length wrapped in TechFlex, to pop into the back of your amp, run to a place to plug it in. You gotta look Check up out these, that Sasquatch line. You gotta look up these Sasquatch cables. They are like industrial thick. Like you'd expect yeah. like someone to be plugging like two power stations together with these things. Like they are like Thick as Costco hot dogs. Yeah, if you want to, they're not that thick. That's they're pretty weird. thick. If you want a speaker cable that you know you can rely on, that's I'm pretty sure going to come with that hundred year guarantee. If it doesn't, blame me personally. If you want a cable that's thick, if we ever get anything, no, yeah. Uh, so head on over. Like, <laughs> man, <laughs> uh, if you're looking, so basically, if you're looking for a power cable, you're looking for a speaker cable. Head on over to sinusoid.com. They make cables. And smiles. This episode's also brought to you by Vibes. Someday someone's going to think that that's your actual tagline, that they make cables and smiles. We're the ones that came up with that. That's on us. We're talking about Vibes high fidelity earplugs. Um, this is an earplug. It comes with three little, uh, what are these called? Like the little insert things. That, yeah. that they're size adjusters. They're great. Here's what you really need to know, guys. You're listening. Ear to this, tips. If you're listening to this show, it's because you are a professional, semi-professional hobbyist, amateur musician. You make music. You like music. You maybe, listen to music. You we get to, it. Maybe you go to shows. Um, maybe you just practice, like to go into your basement and crank that Marshall stack. Whatever. Ooh, who doesn't? When you're done, you got that little ring in your ears. That means or your ears ring. are damaged, and that's not good. And You're that's where screwed up. That's where Vibes comes in. This is a high fidelity earplug, which means it has uh it has I gotta look it at it. It means you can hear the music. Well, what it means is it has filters in it that that allow you to have the reduction in noise intensity and sound intensity without losing the clarity in that sound. Do you know what I mean? I know exactly what you, you know mean. What I'm mean? wearing them right now. I can hear you perfectly. You're just quieter than normal, they which is great because Steve, when he talks, it's like he's yelling at the yeah, top of his lungs. That's true. That's true. Um, they come in small, medium, and large. They come with the tips for small, medium, and large. So you just buy one, you get them all. I like the small tips. Uh, you use that code 60Cycle at checkout, and you're going to get a little discount and free shipping. That sounds like a big tip to me. It is. It is a, what? All right. You get a uh, discount. That's a big tip. It's a big tip. Just go, go to check out the link below. It's going to take you directly. Or I say below, like in the show notes, 
it's going to take you directly to the product page or head to discovervibes.com to check them out. Um, I've been using these around here so I don't have to listen to Ryan. It's fantastic. But these are a great fit. They're low profile. I, I really like these. Yeah, they're great. Uh, they're great uh, earplugs for sure. You ready to do some more show? Absolutely. Let's do some more show. I'm ready to do more show with you, Steve. I feel like I've had enough beers that I'm hitting like that 2016 level of podcasting that we used to do. I'm a little bit loose. Maybe this is the way I need to be. Is this good content? Are we pitch, pitching good tent right now? What, what happened is that we couldn't record on a Thursday. Now we're yeah. recording on a Friday. And I'm just throwing caution into the wind because I don't have to do nothing tomorrow. Dude, I got to work tomorrow. Oh, uh-oh. What's the, what's the next thing we're going to do? The next thing is a topic. Uh-oh. It was sent by Gabrielle Bates. Do you think it's Gabrielle Bates or is it Gabriel Bates? Either way, he Bates. Uh, and anyway, he says, uh, prostituting for guitar pedals. Would you do it? Not pedals. Amps? I mean, how many amps are we talking? I mean, it, it's, it, you know, everyone has a price. Guitars? We're just trying to figure out what it is. I mean, has there, ever, has there ever been a time in your life where you, where you wanted a piece of gear so bad that you would perform sexual favors, Steve? Like, what if someone came around we know, like, there's stuff out there that costs a lot of money, Steve. Okay. Money that's, you know, much much more money than a prostitute would typically fetch. Turning well, it's not, a, a, it's not a, saying a, that you professional would do, service. It's not saying you would do a one-for-one one necessarily. Right, like you're not going to do this for a while. You're off you the market. You're not you going to charge a professional rate. You're going to charge a beyond professional rate because you're, you know, no, 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 I think that I you're, think, you're the you're, I think you're not this, on the market. I think the, what the this listener demand. is asking is it's like a pint of blood. You don't just give one pint of blood. You have to give enough. OK, you have to keep giving until you get enough money for all of that blood. Do you I'm not understanding the blood analogy here. You can sell. Are your, you talking you about sell, selling? You plasma? can sell blood. You sell plasma. Sound of, OK. So, but you don't just sell plasma. Like, if you sell plasma, you're going to sell like. So you're saying that you like have to, what's plasma worth? Like fifty bucks a pint you have, or something. So you're saying you, this is market rate. You have to prostitute yourself enough to earn pedals. That, I think that is the the question at hand. Is this this isn't a a fantasy scenario where it's like, uh, indecent proposal? Would you do these dirty things with me for a dumble? Yeah, I don't think that is the situation here. This isn't do the dirty for a dumble. This is uh, work the uh, the back alleys until you can afford, um, you know, that king of tone. Yeah, off the used market. I'm trying to I'm trying to find the the original thing to see if there's any elaboration. There's not. No, it's just is prostituting for guitar pedals worth it? It's not. There's no theoretical here. This isn't pretty woman. This isn't like. You go into Guitar Center and they're like, you clearly don't have enough money to buy anything here, not even a pack this of strings. Is, this is like, well, I want and that then pedal. You, then I'm you gonna... leave Guitar Center. You meet Richard Gere. You hang out with Richard Gere for like however many days that was. And he says, you know what? You need to go back to Guitar Center and say, hey, you see this? You see this long hair? You see how I look like an 80s rocker now? Well, I came in here a week ago and I looked like a regular schmuck and you did not give me the time of you day. You work on commission, but right? But I know you work on commission. Big mistake. Big mistake. Big mistake. I'm going to Sam Ash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking this ass to Sam Ash. Well, That's Sam a good Ash one, right? will never sponsor this show. <laughs> Yeah, we definitely didn't lose a sponsor just now. That's a, actually a really good... That would be a really great I'm taking story. my ass to Sam Ash. It's a good one. We should we should uh, sell that to them. So I mean, I think we're talking like standard. Let's say average. Gosh, this topic. I mean, we're we're both in a situation now in our lives where, of course, we wouldn't. We're working professionals. We have the money to buy pedals if we want them. We have the means. We do. I don't. We have. You bought a pedal last week. We have. That the doesn't mean I had the money to buy it. Did it you just need a? Bought Did you it. need to prostitute yourself to buy it? I mean, I guess. Well, I mean, 
That depends on how you view my Patreon uh, ad earlier. Did you suck a dick, Steve? I did not. I did not. That is accurate. Make me just come right out and say it. Just ask the question direct. Just ask the question direct. And th yeah. This is what we're this is what we're trying to figure out. Would this you who we are now? Would you suck a dick for a pedal, Steve, at any point in your life? No. Me either. No. I don't think I'd ever I've ever been to that point. I don't think I ever But I feel will. like that's different. So I mean if I was ever in a if I was ever in a place in my life where it's like survival's on the line. Okay. The survival of my family is on the line. You know, or a, a humongous theoretical but, but, payout. Okay, but here's the thing. Then I'd have to sit there and think about hold it. On, but for a on, pedal, but, for a pedal. But both of us are, are, like, at least I am like a pretty like. So they they actually say now that sexuality is a spectrum, right? Okay. I don't, I don't know if you're aware of this. Sure. But I would say like both of us are at least like eighty to ninety. This isn't sexuality, Steve. 80, this is hold business. On, hold on, eighty to ninety percent heterosexual so there's beyond just like the money aspect portion of of this but say somebody comes to you and says look dude People like who prostitute themselves don't do it because they're they're interested in sex is they want the money part that that's i mean sure sure but what i'm saying is i mean going outside of their normal uh sexuality is offensive to them i'm sure Right, and maybe that demands more money. So maybe it's not a pedal or an amp. Maybe it's a dumb. Like maybe that amp is a dumbbell. And then, I mean, you then, don't necessarily need to suck a dick for the pedal, Steve. You could be, you could be a gigolo. You could work. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I think that's a different scenario. Steve Rowe pedal gigolo. So if, well, first of all, my I know my last I know doesn't, didn't work with Steve, a joke though. Steve Rowe pedal gigolo. <laughs> well, well, no, Steve, <laughs> Steve Rowe pedal gigolo. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you really should change the pronunciation of your name. There's so, so many more jokes. I'm the last one, man. Last, you're the last row. Yeah. No, I'm the last row. Wow. I'm the I'm the only. I also have two daughters, so I'm literally. But you don't think there's anyone else in the world with that last name? I mean, there might be, but not in like that. Not, in your family. not in my family that okay. I'm aware of. Okay, I I get it. You gotta wait till everyone else is dead. Change the pronunciation you? of your last well, name. Well, I guess you're not the last Burke because you have a son. So you're definitely not yeah, the last I'm Burke. I'm not the last Burke. But your so father far. your father was the last uh was what the last was not the last Burke. Somewhat your grandmother was the last Burke. Are we gonna get into my family genealogy <laughs> Sorry, in this podcast? We're just flying off the rails. All right. Um what what I'm saying is like I think being a gigolo, like a gigolo state is maybe different. It's it's at least more, I think it's more reasonable to think about if a guy comes to you and says, Hey man, look, like you got to get my wife off my back. I'm at a point in my life where I'm just only interested in being asexual, but my wife is peaking. His wife like, has needs. And I've got a clon centaur. Can you help me out? Well, in this, in this scenario, in a, a real life, a scenario, it, like a clon centaur is nowhere near enough reward to risk our relationships with our wives. But suppose um suppose Gabriel Bates is a single dude. You think he should go all in on that? I'm not going to say he shouldn't. I'm, I'm not going to say he should. I think he's got I mean, I think really, he's got to make that call because it, it, really, Centaur. it really comes down to I mean, he's the one who has to make that decision. Like he has to decide is this is this worth it to me? Is this woman attractive to me? Am I, is it, dude, if she, are there worth, are the risks worth? You're, you're a gigolo, it doesn't matter. Right. It's I mean, all about that payoff. We can't answer this question for anyone but ourselves, though. I can't tell someone like, well, hey, no, he's not asking if it's, it's not asking, would you prostitute yourself for an effect pedal? Should anyone prostitute he's saying, themselves? Should anyone do it? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. I think the risks are too high. I think um, what, what risks? What I risks think if you're gonna right? if you are gonna gigolo yourself or prostitute okay. yourself, then you should do it for the money, and then buy the things that you want. And I think you should make sure that you're operating in an environment that is safe. That, sure, I mean that, obvi obviously, like that represents you, and recognizes your safety and needs as a working professional. I mean, maybe less than obvious, but I feel like it's obvious that you would not be posting on Craigslist. 
Will Gigolo for Tube Screamer. Right. Like, yeah, no, it's like 25 bucks or 75 bucks a hit. So every time you're still getting a Tube Screamer every time you perform. That's too many Tube Screamers if you're doing it multiple times. Like, I'm not many- saying you have to, you do it a couple times and then you, you buy a, a different, like the Tube Screamer, a Turbo Tube Screamer. <laughs> or maybe you do it like four or five times and you get that new uh, Vemer- Vemeram, uh uh, as people are as collabo as people are listening to this they are making memes Ow. of someone gigoloing themselves or prostituting themselves with a thought bubble above their head just thinking of a tube screamer a turbo tube screamer <laughs> oh gotta get that turbo tube screamer i don't think anyone in the history of ever has prostituted themselves for something on the level of a turbo tube of- screamer of guitar pedals in general, I think typically that's like a make ends meet survival sort of scenario or like, oh, so you're at, not, at least you're not saying at least in the very best scenarios in places where it's regulated and legal and things like that. Like this, I just pay my regular bills with this first. And then like, I have fun money left over. It's not like I got to get this pedal. I'm going to, I'm going to sell that ass. We've been saying ass a lot this episode. Yeah. Yeah. I made a note to make, make sure this, Episode is labeled as explicit. <laughs> um, Watch, we lose all our sponsors off this episode. We sure. deserve to. I've had com- I've had upfront personal conversations with at least two of our sponsors. I'm sure we won't lose those ones. We're gonna be okay. I've had conversations with three of our sponsors. Dang, uh, dude. Close and close. Sick. You know, right? I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. Humble brag. Hashtag humble brag. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I. I just, I can't wrap my head around for a pedal. I mean, pedals are great. I just, I don't think there's a necessity there to what if you're like, What if it. you're like, oh man, $400 for a Strymon timeline. That's like Volante or whatever. Like you got it. Like, how am I going to get this? Like $500 or whatever. Which, how else are you going to get $500, Ryan? A minimum wage job. That's gonna take you. Wait, what's the minimum wage now? Twelve dollars an hour? I think it's like twelve twenty five or no, something no, like that. It's twelve. It's only twelve. Okay. Uh, that's gonna take you five hundred dollars. Steve said it with the confidence like he's earning minimum wage right now. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not. That's gonna take you like twenty five hours of work, and that's only if you're not paying taxes. I mean, it is quicker. I mean, all taxation is theft. So if you're paying taxes, what's wrong with it? It is quicker to suck a dick than to work for twenty five hours. You said. Yeah, I mean, if you do it right, you only have to work for five minutes. You don't have... Well, I mean, if you're good, but if you're doing it your first time, it's probably going to be a lot longer. (laughs) Steve had a hard swallow there. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) I I mean, if if time is really the issue for you and that's how you want to save time, I guess... I guess like if you wait, hold on, Ryan, are you recommending that people prostitute themselves to for, save for time guitar money to save time? I guess. How dare you, sir? Why did we choose this topic? Because it's you highly is it, because it's highly entertaining for who we're going to get a message from coach Schneider and he's going to say, I guess I spit out my coffee while I was listening to this. I mean, you're probably, I, does he listen to this? Show? Yes, he does. Okay. All right, this last ad was sent by Ryan Wataski from Fuzzrocious Pedals. I'm wearing a shirt. Is that demo going to be up? No, I'm sure. What, uh, what date is this? Two weeks from soon. I think it'll come out the same week, but after this. Oh, okay. Way to spoil it, Steve. Well, we don't know what it's going to be for. It's going to be for the knob, John. That's a knob shirt, man. Oh, this is going to come out way early because this is going to come out on the 11th. It's only going to come. It's that that demo is going to launch the fifteenth. So keep an eye out on the fifteenth, everybody, for a new demo from Buzzrocious Pedals. Where if you follow their Instagram, you've already seen. It's not a secret. You've, yeah, it's not a secret. It's actually it's very not a secret. It's oh, dude, I I watched yours, and Ryan's is better. Oh, you know what? Ryan's video that he did on like Facebook Live <laughs> or whatever. It's to the point and it gets it done so quick it's and so, so efficient. It's so cool. It's really brilliant. Like it's he, so cool. The whole demo is him talking through the pedal to show you what it does. 
it's pretty brilliant. It it made me a little mad that mine wouldn't be so good, but I did my standard demo thing. So you know. yeah, yeah. Yours is yours is good. His is just better. This is a custom made leather top guitar body shape horse leg table, two hundred and seventy five dollars. Uh, that would you suck a dick for it? No. <laughs> uh, this is a it says custom made leather top guitar body shape wood horse leg table, one of a kind. It's a wood table. It's got wood and horse legs. The top of the table is leather. It's vaguely shaped like an acoustic guitar. In the middle of it, it's got like a rope going around a buffalo. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess that's a bison, not a buffalo. My favorite thing it's about an this... It's an American buffalo. My favorite thing about this is uh, in the email where Ryan sent this to us. He says, it's a table. It has horse legs. It's acoustic guitar shaped. You can't put anything on the table because it's leather and has crap on it to block you from putting things on it. I could put stuff on this table. I think you can in see in those the, regions down on. there, in that region up there. I think you can see the horse's genitalia, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure it's like a truncated tail. But because it's a truncated tail, it looks like genitalia. It kind of looks like genitalia. I I don't get the acoustic guitar connection at all. It. It's vaguely guitar shaped. If I, if you saw a guitar shaped like that, you would screen grab it and we'd be talking about it on the show because it would be bananas. Yeah, I mean, this is more cello shaped. You are right. It's not cello shaped at all. What are you talking about? It's vaguely cello shaped. It is not vaguely cello shaped. I just watched Steve close out Google Drive and open Cat and Evolution. What? Are you about to play... An evolving cat game while we're podcasting, Steve? Ryan, evolution's not real. You, of all people, should know that. <laughs> all right. I don't see any reason to buy this table for $275. No, thank you. I'll pass. I don't care if it does have horse legs. I concur. This is ridiculous. All right. Bye, everybody. Stay grounded. Stay grounded. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, we're we gonna do the song. Talk about the song, dude. This week's song was sent by Matt Gore. Uh, he says, "Song for the podcast." Uh, this is a song by my musical alter ego, Bob Neptune, which is a great I musical alter ego. I love it. This is an attempt at a novelty space song. There isn't any guitar on it. Why did you send it to the show, dude? I'm just kidding. I'm just play kidding. Songs that don't have guitar. There isn't any guitar on it. I had a vague idea to redo the synth part on a guitar, but then I didn't really want to spend any more time on it. The janky synth seemed to suit it anyway. Drums are a mixture of Lindrum and 909 style sounds. And the synth and bass lines are from a Yamaha DX7 emulator. The samples are chopped up from NASA audio files. Uh, more of my music, which is mostly ambient and soundscaping, can be found at soundcloud.com slash bobneptune. This song is called Experimental Astronauts. Hope you love it. We said ass again. Bye, everybody. Stay grounded.
Training.